Have you ever wanted a tool for Unreal that scatters debris naturally instead of having to place everything by hand? Well, today you're going to learn how to use physics to aid in your level design and environment art process to add convincing and realistic detail to your shots for anything from pebbles or broken rock sediments to general piles of rubble. This tool helps you get really good results. The physical layout plugin is free, easy to use, a little buggy sometimes, but totally worth adding to your toolbox. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and let's start to sim. In the Epic Marketplace, just type in physical layout tool download it and install it to your engine version of choice. Once you open up your project, make sure you go to settings, plugins, and make sure you enable the physical layout plugin in the list. Once you've enabled your plugin, you should find it in the list right here. Before we get started with scattering rocks everywhere, we need to ensure that all the models in question, both the target model that we want to scatter things on and the object that we want to scatter, these all need to have collision set up. By default, most models will not have any collision, so we need to create it. So here in the default scene, I'm going to just go ahead and create the base ground that I want to scatter my rocks on. So we're going to go ahead and drag and drop a cube here and I'm going to scale it like this. I need to find some object that I want to scatter on this ground right here. So using the Quixel bridge, I have a whole bunch of rocks here that I'm going to scatter on this ground. But to set up collision on these rocks, we're going to open up the static mesh editor by double clicking on it. And you'll see up here we have a collision tab we're going to click on. And we want to click on auto convex collision. And on the bottom here, you should see a new tab open up. All we need to do is hit the apply button right here. And you'll see we have this kind of greenish wireframe showing up on our rock here. That's our new collision mesh that we just created. Now you'll see it kind of loosely follows the shape of the rock. And for now, that's going to be OK. So we'll just hit save, close this. And now we also need to make sure that the ground has collision on it, too. So whatever you want to scatter the rock onto also needs to have collision. But a primitive shape like the cube in Unreal already has collision enabled, so we don't need to do that. If you want to visualize whether or not there's a collision on a mesh, in the lit tab up here, we can click on player collision. And you'll see we already do have collision here. So now that we have collision on our rocks, we're ready to go ahead and scatter rocks on the floor here by going up and going to the physical layout mode. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint place right here and we're going to do a drag and drop on our rock right here in the mesh. If you want to add multiple different kinds of rocks, you can go ahead and add them right here. I'm just going to add two variants here. Now there are a few things you really need to be aware of when you're using this. So I'm going to go through with you my preferred settings that just pretty much work all the time. So first thing, minimum distance here, that's going to control the spacing between the object that you paint. And I like to drag this down to minimum. Next is minimum position and max position. I usually like to set the Z axis to something like 150. Max rotation, I always tend to crank up to 360, 360, and 360, because that'll make it so each rock we place will be oriented in a different angle every time. Lastly, min and max scale random is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to set this to two and maybe six. The last thing we need to do is you're going to want to place this with gravity, because otherwise your rocks are going to go floating across the universe, and this is probably not what you want. Now we're ready to go ahead and click on our rocks here, and you'll see we're placing a whole bunch of rocks into a nice pile. And the great thing about this tool is that it makes the result extremely convincing, because placing a pile of rocks like this by hand would be a total nightmare. But with physics, we kind of get all the hard work done for us. So that's the beauty of this tool. Now, let's say I want to scatter some additional small pebbles. So I'm going to change the min scale to like 0.1 and let's say 2. And you'll see how the rocks are kind of spawning about a meter and a half above my cursor. That's what the minimum position random does, because I'll show you what happens if you set this to zero, if you leave it at default. I'm going to reset this like that. I'm going to reset the scale as well, just for demonstration purposes. You'll notice that the rocks will kind of go flying all over the place and the end result may actually end up being very similar. But I don't really like rocks spawning from underneath. I like them spawning above and falling down onto my ground. I just feel like it gives me more control and a better result. But really, it's up to you. Once you've placed your rocks here, do not switch back to the selection mode. That's going to crash on real. That's one of the bugs that I was telling you about at the beginning of the video. What you'll need to do beforehand is you'll need to select all placed actors. And then we're going to hit bake selected actors into static mesh. And that's going to create a new actor here. Once you've done that, now we can go ahead and switch back to selection mode without crashing. And once we've baked everything, you'll see that we can still select each and every one of the individual rocks, but in the outliner, we'll have a new actor zero. If we select that, now we can move the whole thing around like this. And it really is as simple as that. But now let's say I want this actor to be a static mesh that I can save in my content browser. I want to save that as an asset so that I can reuse it in other levels. So we're going to go up here to actor. We're going to go to merge actors and click on merge. We're going to call this rock pile one and hit save. And this will create a whole new asset for you that you can now use in any level. The merging process can take a little while sometimes, so you'll have to be a little patient. But now you can see we can place our rock pile that we just created in our scene like this. So it's a very powerful tool for creating all kinds of rubble that, like I said, would be tremendously tricky to do by hand. So now that we've kind of learned the basics, I'm going to show you a few little things that are good to know about when using the physical layout tool. And there's a few things that you really should be aware of when it comes to collision as well. So first and foremost, let's go back to our physical 
layout mode here, and you'll see we lost a lot of our settings. The plugin doesn't remember any of your settings, so I find that to be pretty tedious and, and annoying when you're trying to go back and forth between art directing versus placing stuff. Not ideal, but ultimately not a deal breaker either. Sometimes when you select all your placed actors, this kind of thing might happen. It tends to happen pretty randomly. All that's happening is that the gravity got deactivated on your meshes. So the way to fix that is just select all placed actors and enable gravity for selected, and they'll fall back to the ground just like this. If you want to start over again, just select all placed actors and hit the delete key, and that'll give you a fresh start. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about collision on open meshes. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this mega scan rock formation here. And let's say I want to scatter some rocks inside the crevices. You'll see these rocks here are kind of low res, and I really want to add some details to scatter some additional rocks that we just had in here. So what we need to do, I'm going to open up this mesh here once again, and I'm going to generate a collision like we just did before. And you'll see our green wireframe, but you'll see the green wireframe doesn't really match the shape of our rock formation here. It's very low res. So we can increase these counts and the max verts for slightly more accurate shapes and results. But the problem with that is it can really only go so far. So now we have to do a slightly better matching shape. Like we can see here, it's just not very good. And you'll see when we start placing rocks here, they're just kind of floaty. Obviously not what we want. We want them to fall into the cracks. It's just that the collision measure isn't accurate enough. So one thing we can do is we're going to go up to the static mesh editor again. And in the collision section here, we can set complex collision as simple. Now what this is going to do is it's going to use the high resolution mesh as the collision mesh. This is a lot heavier on your system, but I'm going to try and paint my rocks again. You'll see this is working a whole lot better than it was before. We're actually getting rocks to fall into those crevices and this can work very well. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this whole cavity with rocks. But the reason the complex collision as simple doesn't always work that well is because if we go underneath the mesh, you'll see a lot of the rocks begin falling through the ground. And that's because the mesh itself is what we call an open mesh, meaning it's all open on the bottom side of the mesh. And so as the result, the collision is very thin. So the rocks kind of poke through the collision mesh, they can fall through really easily. So if you need a collision mesh that really matches the high fidelity detail of such a model, but you don't want your rocks falling through it, the solution to this is to export the model into another program like Blender or ZBrush. And you can give your mesh some thickness. And when you do have thickness, when it becomes a closed mesh, we can then export that mesh again from ZBrush or Blender or Maya, whatever, import that into Unreal, and you can load it as your complex collision mesh right here. You can use a custom mesh as the collision. So that's one thing that might be handy for you to know about. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Is this a tool you've used before? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, as always, take care of yourself and each other.